Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. This show is brought to you by Audible. They are the leading provider of spoken audio information and entertainment. You know I'm a huge Audible fan because you can listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Whether you're at the beach, the gym, or stuck in traffic, there's nothing quite like Audible. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash Lutz and sign up today. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network.com. I'm Kerry Lutz on 1230 WBZT. So how much credit is too much credit? Are we there yet? Or are we just a black swan away? Bill Holter is here to answer those questions and figure out how much longer the charade's going on. Hey, Bill, how are you? Good. How are you, Kerry? Doing good. Doing good. So speaking of black swans, in my development, I mentioned before I saw a couple of black swans, and I'm going over this bridge, and my friend in the car says, what kind of bird is that? And I said, that is a black swan, and she had no idea what it was. I stop on top of the bridge so I'm going to take a picture of it because nobody's going to believe that there's black swans in Florida. And it's my second sighting. Pull out my camera. Somebody rides up behind me, blows the horn. Just as I'm about to take the picture, the damn thing flies off. And that's it. I was so angry about it. I can't even tell you. They could have just gone around me. What was the big deal? But that's that's the way people are, right? <laughs> uh next time next time but it was pretty cool seeing it and it was definitely a black swan if i had any doubts about it last time i don't anymore but also don't have any doubts about this credit meltdown that we saw in 0809 it's going to come back now even worse than ever isn't it well yeah the the, the debt numbers of debt ratios are are higher in worse shape today than they were uh, back in 2008, 2009, back then, governments all over the world stood up and, and made all kinds of guarantees. They, they guaranteed their banking systems, depositors, etc., and they took on all kinds of debt and blew their balance sheets out to try to reflate. And now here we are again in the exact same situation and only worse. Right. So, I mean, and then when you look at the ratio of debt that's out there to gold, uh, Sinclair just did some work on that. It's it's really frightening, isn't it? Yeah, he put a chart on his uh, website. I forget who did it. I think it was uh, Gold Charts or someone like that. Uh, showed that there's 16 point something trillion worth of debt. Uh, it goes all the way back to the beginning of, of last century. Uh and something like 400 and, I forget, $450 billion worth of gold. Mm-hmm. That chart on its own is frightening. The only problem is that chart's not right because there's way, way, way more debt and way more obligations that the U.S. government has than $16.5 trillion. I mean, the, the numbers certainly over $100 trillion, and I've seen studies done where, where we have uh, current debt and future obligations of over $200 trillion. Yeah, Kotlikoff then, says that, yeah. Right, and then on the other side of it, do we really have all the gold that, that we say we have? There's not been an audit done since 1956. Are we to believe that all of these other things that... Uh, the financial numbers or economic numbers today, which you know are, are bogus. I mean, inflation's running at 2%. I don't think so. Just go to the store. Go to the store today and go to the store in in a month from now, and you can see that inflation's running over 2%. The, the point being, there's all kinds of things that we've been told that you can see with your own eyes are not true. Are our gold holdings... The only thing that's not been been lied about 
and we're we're told. I mean, w- you can see that market after market after market is manipulated. Uh, you, you saw the the LIBOR scandal. Uh, firm after firm pays penalties without admitting guilt uh, for all kinds of fraud. Yeah, we're told that gold and silver are free markets. Are they the only markets that are, are not manipulated? Not possible. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, every market everywhere on the planet is manipulated uh, at this point. Uh, there's, they're all rigged. You know, everybody I've had on, nobody is willing to point out any example, Bill, of any market that's not rigged. And if you've got an example, we will give you one ounce of silver for pointing out one market that is not rigged okay a publicly traded market not the grocery stand not the corn I market say, how about the lemonade stand across the street from me well that one's rigged because you know you got to get workman's comp and you got to have liability insurance <laughs> and you need a permit they're all rigged let's face it because the government is intervening in everything for its own ends, not for your ends, not to make your life better, not to not to improve your life and the life around you, but just to keep this Ponzi scheme alive and well for another day. Right. So so where does well, this that's leave why us? That's why all this debt was taken on. <laughs> the, the debt year after year after year was taken on because they had to continue reflating the system and they had to continue rolling the debt over. And the debt, in my opinion... You can go back to the days of of John Connolly when he made the statement, you know, it may be our dollar, but it's your problem. Uh, That's when the debt really started to to expand. It wasn't exponential at that point. Uh, But I think the decision was made back then never to pay the debt down. I have always called it the, the never pay policy. The buy now, pay never policy, and I'm all in favor of it if it applies to me. But uh, for the government, it's probably not a good thing. And, yeah, it's kind of absurd because the last time the U.S. didn't have debt, didn't have a public debt, you know when that was, Bill? Um, No debt would have been back in the 1800s, like maybe 18... I want to say 1836, 1838, yep. something like that. Andrew Jackson was president okay. because he eliminated the Second Bank of the United States because you know, that's the interesting thing. He eliminates that bank. Immediately, there's no debt. We're out of debt. And the last true balanced budget was uh, 1960. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that the, was... The supposed balanced budget of the year 2000 was a farce because, yeah, we had... Uh, what was the number, $18, $18 billion surplus, but yet we took on more debt. So mm-hmm. it was not a balanced budget. Yeah, and, and from an actuarial standpoint of the entitlement to programs being underfunded, the debt of those programs went up. If you were going on a gap right. basis, the way corporations have to report, forget it, you know, right. no way. So we know this, and... I just find it hysterical that the last time we had no debt in this country uh, was close to 200 years ago, 180 years ago. And as long as there's a central bank, you're going to have debt. As long as there's wars, you're going to have debt. And we had debt going uh, after, in the era of free banking, up till uh, the imposition of the Federal Reserve. But it was like very minor kind of debt that really could have been paid off in a year or two. Had right, their, yeah, yeah, it was manageable and probably uh, probably reasonable to have taken it on. And now, well, actually, the debt peaked at the end of uh, the Civil War, and it, it it was being paid down into the beginning of the, the turn of the century. Yeah, I uh, wrote an a piece not too long ago. If you want to take a look at it, you go to the Bureau of Public Debt. There actually is such a thing and they have a, they're part of the treasury and they will give you the history of U.S. public debt. 
and uh, it is fascinating. I mean, it's not a real, real in-depth look, but uh, here on the website it says the United States debt, foreign and domestic, was the price of liberty. That's what Alexander Hamilton said, which there's definitely some truth to that. Uh, I don't want to get into the whole uh, Rothschild debate that who underwrote the U.S. Revolutionary War debt. You know, I don't want to get into that because it's just maddening to try to uh, do it. But on this page, Bill, you can make a contribution to reduce the debt. Okay, and um, it's called uh, pay.gov, P-A-Y.gov, and you can go on there now. And I would encourage you to everybody out there to contribute 25 cents to reduce the U.S. public debt and then send the receipt over here to kl at kerrylutz.com and we'll post those receipts and then it'll be proof that you are a good citizen and you're helping your country in its time of need, right? That would work out to about, what, 80 million yeah, $80 million. <laughs> I wonder how many minutes it, it takes for them to borrow $80 million. Yeah, well... I'm sure, I mean, it's definitely uh, <laughs> definitely less than an hour, I would guess. Yeah, very, very quickly, no doubt. Um, hey, and they have the history of the public debt on this page, and it's really, really a great... It's a great resource to read this because... The Civil War resulted in a major debt growth. The debt was $65 million in 1860, but in 1863 it passed $1 billion and then reached $2.7 billion the following year. And by the time we hit the 20th century, it was at $22 billion. And there were no entitlement programs. There was no uh, you know, programs that we're going to run up debt in the future. And right. tw- 22 billion then is probably, eh, it's probably close to a trillion dollars now, you know, figuring it reasonably 100 times, 80 times. Yeah, it's, it could be close to a couple trillion dollars, which is nothing compared to what we have now, where we have 220 trillion. So and that was back in the day of self reliance can do spirit and yeah. neighbors help neighbors but that is no longer yeah so so i just want to take a brief pause here and we're going to talk more about this public debt and and the debt to gold ratio Hi, this is Kerry Lutz of the Financial Survival Network. These are trying times. The most important issue you face today is how to stay free in a world that's becoming less free by the day. Join myself, Mickey Fulp, Robert Ian, David Morgan, and 12 others at the Liberty Mastermind Symposium in Dallas on June 28th, 29th, and learn how to create your personal roadmap to staying free. Don't miss it. Join us and register now at libertymastermind.us. Sign in at libertymastermind.us. All right, and we are back. We're talking with Bill Halter on the FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com, and we're talking about the debt-to-gold ratio. So when we don't know how much gold we have, we don't really know how much debt we have, but when you try to create a ratio of the two, it gets rather frightening, no matter if you work on the best information that you have, it really is kind of scary. Well, if you work on the official information, it's scary. If you look at the if you look at the sixteen trillion and you know we've got at least a hundred trillion and you look at the, the gold and anecdotal evidence from wherever you look says we don't have that much gold, then it's even scarier. Mm-hmm. So I mean it's the only way for that debt to gold ratio to come back to any type of normalcy would be to revalue gold multiples, multiples, multiples upon what it is right now. Because debt just won't go away. You can't wave your your magic wand and say, debt be gone. But you can wave a magic wand and say, okay, we're revaluing gold to pick a number, 20,000, 50,000, whatever per ounce, 
and then your your debt to gold ratio comes back comes back to to some semblance of of normalcy. Well, you can repudiate though, and it's been done before. Iceland did it. Yeah, you can, uh, but Cuba did it. About the world's reserve currency. <laughs> That's a yeah. problem. Yeah, well, it's not going to be the world's re- reserve currency much longer. You and I both know that. Um, right. On the show notes to this interview, I'm going to put Alexander Hamilton's first message, first report on the public debt that he wrote in 1790. I think it's good for a laugh because, uh, like I said, it says, The United States debt, foreign and domestic, was the price of liberty. The faith of America has been repeatedly pledged for it. Among ourselves, the most enlightened friends of good government are those whose expectations of prompt payment are the highest. It goes on. You need to read it and understand how much things have changed from the way they used to be. And Bill, uh, obviously, get your newsletter. Want to sign up for that? Where should you go to get that? Uh, Go to the Miles Franklin website, uh, it lists myself, uh, David Shackman, Andy Hoffman. Just click on my name. Uh, and then down at the bottom, just sign up, put your email address in, and you'll get it every day. All right. Hey, well, it's it's uh, definitely must-reading, and we will talk to you again soon. I hope you're going to make it to the Liberty Mastermind Symposium. We'll really look forward to seeing you there. Give it a try. All right. You be well. The show is brought to you by Audible. If you want to listen to it, Audible has it. Would you believe they've got over 100,000 titles in virtually every genre you can think of? And don't forget, you'll get a free audiobook and 30-day trial just for signing up today at audiblepodcast.com slash Lutz. That's audiblepodcast.com slash L-U-T-Z. The Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. 